Helicobacter pylori. And Helicobacter pylori, or H. pylori as an abbreviation, is a gram-negative bacteria, and it causes stomach ulcers and cancers. This bacteria thrives in an acidic environment, and that's what allows it to live inside the stomach. Now, the symptomatology of an H. pylori infection is essentially the same symptomatology of a gastric ulcer or gastritis, and that includes heartburn, epigastric or abdominal pain and tenderness. In addition to that, the patient may also have symptoms of nausea, and sometimes these ulcers can bleed. And this epigastric pain is associated with meals, so that's an important characteristic. Talk a little bit about the pathophysiology of H. pylori. What I want to show is just certain parts of the stomach here. So if you draw a basic diagram of the stomach, this part here, of course, leading to the stomach is the esophagus. And this part at the top is known as the fundus. And then a major part of the stomach is known as the body. And this part here is known as the antrum. And of course, it leads into the duodenum. Now, if you have a H. pylori infection of the antrum, then what that does is it causes an increase in gastrin production. And gastrin, of course, is a hormone that increases the acid. And that can cause ulcers, but in particular, ulcers in the duodenum, so duodenal ulcers. Now, in contrast, if you have an infection of the body, this area, that can actually lead to gastric ulcers. And in addition to ulcers in the stomach, and it can also lead to stomach cancers, in particular adenocarcinomas. H. pylori is a bacteria that actually produces ammonia. And this ammonia is important because it can actually be responsible for eroding that mucus barrier that exists in the stomach. In addition to the ammonia, H. pylori can also produce certain enzymes such as protease and lipase, and these are responsible for causing mucosal damage. In terms of the diagnosis, there's two ways you can diagnose this, in addition to, of course, the symptoms. The first is a blood test, and this blood test is detecting antibodies to H. pylori. The second way that you can diagnose this is a very famous test known as the urea breath test. Now what that is, is that the patient is given an oral dose of urea. After the patient is given this urea, what happens is the H. pylori, if the patient does indeed have it, metabolizes this urea and liberates CO2. And that CO2 is, of course, exhaled. And because it's been labeled, it can be measured. So it's a very interesting way of diagnosing H. pylori. In terms of treatment, there's two regimens. The first regimen is known as triple therapy because it involves three medications. The first medication is a proton pump inhibitor. For example, omeprazole, which is a very famous proton pump inhibitor. It decreases the acid. And then the next two medications that are part of the triple therapy are antibiotics. The first one is clarithromycin, and the next one is amoxicillin. And this regimen of these three together is given for a period of 14 days. The other type of treatment option is known as quadruple therapy. And that, of course, as the name implies, has four medications. You have a proton pump inhibitor, such as omeprazole. You have an antibiotic, tetracycline. You have bismuth. And then you also have another antibiotic known as metronidazole. And this is usually the more common of the two. Now let's take a look at a couple of vignettes. 
48-year-old investment banker comes to the office because of a four-month history of achy abdominal pain. He states that the pain is exacerbated by meals, and he often feels very nauseous. He is generally very healthy except for some mild back pain for which he takes ibuprofen. He estimates that he has taken over two over-the-counter ibuprofen pills every three days for the past few months. He smokes half a pack of cigarettes a day, drinks a glass of wine. He works until 10. He has to take care of his kids in the spare time, and he says he feels very stressed out. Physical exam shows mild epigastric tenderness. A urea breath test is positive, and a barium study shows a 1.5 centimeter discrete crater in the antrum of the stomach with radiating mucosal folds originating from the ulcer margin. Most likely cause of this patient's condition is he has the symptoms. He has abdominal pain and nausea. But the most important part of the vignette, of course, is this. The urea breath test being positive is most likely due to him being positive for H. pylori. And H. pylori, of course, is a gram-negative bacteria. So the answer to this question would be B. And the next one. 33-year-old woman comes to the office because of abdominal pain associated with meals. The patient works as a social worker in a very urban area of the city and complains that she is constantly under tremendous work-related stress. She states that over the last four to six months, she has had slowly worsening abdominal pain, mid-epigastric, that is associated with meals. She denies nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, or radiation. Diagnostic test is performed, and on a follow-up four-week visit, the patient is told that she has an active H. pylori infection. Most appropriate pharmacotherapy is, well, triple therapy is probably the most common, and that consists of a proton pump inhibitor, such as omeprazole to reduce the acid, and two antibiotics to eradicate the bacteria, so choice C. All of these other answer choices are part of triple therapy or quadruple therapy, but not the complete set of medications.